Hello and welcome to this new video in which I will show you how you connect a soil moisture sensor to the Motix to use for example uh, with irrigation and such. So what we are going to need is a capacitive soil moisture sensor um, and I am using this capacitive one because the resistive ones tend to corrode really easily and really fast and they do not last very long and these capacitive uh, ones if you seal them properly so you seal the uh, electronics at the top with some sort of silicone or hot glue and you uh, coat the side of the PCB uh, the, so the edge with uh, another uh, sort of sealant these ones uh, well, will last very long. And we will also need a D1 Mini or Node MCU. Uh, well, any ESP based uh, board will do as long as it has an analog input. input. Uh, so, let's. Uh, if you connected it uh, like shown on the picture, so ground to ground, VCC to 3.3 volts, and analog out to the analog zero port uh, you can connect it using the USB uh, to your computer and then we are going to need some software packages so at first we are going to need the uh, node MCU flasher and this is a Windows based tool so you go to the Win32 on their github I will try to link this in in the description and we are go just going to download the Node MCU flasher using the download button over here. It will download it really easy. All right. Then we are going to need ESP Easy software, which is also found on their uh, GitHub page. And we are going to download this zip file, which I have already done. So I've got the uh, zip file over here. They uh, do include the ESP flasher, so you would not have to download it e separately. But what we are going to need to do is we are going to need a folder, uh, which I've called flash shun off. And in my test motor folder, I've got all the bins I need. But I've got this program, so you copy this program into the folder, and then we go to binary. And we are going to go to the ESP easy and we do not need the custom or minimal we do need to want the normal and we want the normal one megabytes bin I think that's what I previously had yeah the normal one mag bin so we've got that over here now so with our D1 mini plugged in we can start flash ESP8266 it will select the last connected COM part, but you can check that if you want to. And then we want to connect, uh, well, uh, select the firmware we want to flash, so that's our ESP Easy. Flash it, uh, and well, we just have to wait a bit until it has finished flashing. All right, now that our flash is complete, we click OK. And now we need to uh, connect the D1 Mini to our Wi-Fi network. And to do that, uh, we first need to restart it. So we will push the little reset button that is on the side of the D1 Mini. This button over here is the reset button. If we press that, the D1 Mini will restart. And then we get another device with Wi-Fi. Uh, I am now using my phone, uh, well, which you can't see. But there is a network uh, called ESP Easy, and we need to connect to that network, which apparently has a password which it hadn't, did not have before. ESP Easy Wi-Fi password. 
let's see easy setup the ESP the password is config ESP so config ESP connects let's see if my phone yeah my phone's connected now uh, it obviously will not have any uh, well internet connection but that does not really matter and now we want to uh, go to uh, 192.168.4.1 uh, on the uh, device we have connected to the D1 mini and then we want to connect it to our uh, Wi-Fi network so now we've connected to our uh, D1 mini with ESP Easy uh, once it's connected to our network using the IP address and now we want to set a couple of things so we need to set a controller which is uh, the Motix MQTT in our case I'm going to use MQTT but you can use HTTP but I prefer MQTT so I will enter my MQTT stuff over here uh, user MQ my username and password and I will submit let's see and uh, we need to uh, check the enable because otherwise it will not uh, work it will just be saved in there and do nothing now we need to go to devices we want to add a de device and it is the internal analog analog input and we name it uh, soil it is enabled we want to send it to controller with an idx we will come to in a minute and we need a formula in here because otherwise it will be a lot of gibberish and we need to copy the formula from this forum post I will only only use this formula the rest of the post we will not use but this formula is very handy so now we need an IDX and for that we need to go to Domotics we need to go to our hardware and we need a dummy hardware and we need to make a virtual sensor we need to make a custom sensor which is a soil test in my case and the, the label for me is a percentage once it's created in our devices menu if we sort our IDXs <coughs> uh, it's for me 1099 we will copy that and paste it into here and submit. All right, and the interval for testing purposes I will also set to one second. So now over here we will see, well, it's floating in the air and it says 3%. I have got a glass of water over here and if I set it in there, it will jump very high because well it's almost completely <laughs> submerged and I submerged just submerged it way too far so even the formula wasn't able to uh, figure out what it was but that essentially is the sensor and if we go na now go to domotics and scroll over here we've got that percentage in <coughs> our domotics system ready to use uh, for us with any automation we would like so uh, you can put this all uh, the d1 mini in a waterproof enclosure with some sort of power supply and waterproof the sensor like I described earlier using a bit of silicone around the electronics at the top and sealing it around the edges and you can use this outdoors perfectly fine so I hope uh, you learned something, it was helpful. Uh, if so, please share, like and subscri subscribe uh, and all of that. And I will see you next time.